Haven four-point domination. Bit of a change from the usual three-pointers. Now, this came up a few times in the last run of King of the Sea, where this map made a fairly major debut. And there's a lot of the teams didn't quite seem to know how to handle it. They didn't quite seem to have their tactics down. So one thing that we saw was a lot of scraps around the southwest corner of the island chain, if you see it on the map. Yeah. I see that chain, yeah. Yeah, and there's also a natural corridor. You've got that string of islands to the northeast, and then the gap between the circ circular formation. Mm -hmm. So yep. we tended to see the fighting coming in two zones. One was in that corridor, and one was at that southwest corner where the fleets collided. There was also an observation that perhaps the northwestern starting team had an advantage. Although I can't say I've ever seen that borne out in random, but that might not be a good guide. Interesting, yeah. I'm this map I'm very indifferent about, I must be said. Uh obviously having only played from a random point of view, it'll be different, but more often than not, in randoms you often go along the outside edges and you don't go through the island so much, but with competitive and the amount of smoke and radar you can use, there's a lot of good islands that you can actually use to hide a chapaya behind or start to lay a smoke screen between the islands, which offer quite a lot of uh good opportunities there yes the problem with those island chains of course is that once you are in the only way out tends to be through the enemy that is a problem yes like having a good escape route is important but not usually that many good escape routes no there aren't we'll have to see where this goes we'll also have to see if they've changed their lineup i don't see any obvious tweaks to the team's ship choices for this next game so let's see what the actual map distribution says Pravda versus Nord Atlantic Blitz. Pravda fighting now to stay in the match. And we are gay on. And I don't see any changes, which is a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, I'm seeing same loadout here as well. Mm -hmm. Worth noting, of course, on the cruiser side, Nab have gone for two Kutuzovs. Pravda have gone for two Chpaevs. So Neat. Nab have got that smoke advantage. Mm hmm. If uh, Father can get those Chapaevs in a good position, though, which they will have a lot of options with the amount of islands, maybe that will be important to counteract that smoke. Maybe. As you say, there's a lot of cover on this. Oh, damn it. Battle start. And. Set. Something I only recently noticed, by the way, on the carrier UI is that you do actually have a max range indicator for the torpedo drops now. Indeed you do. Yes, that area at the edge of the cone where the green just stops. I believe that's your maximum range indicator. It would appear to be so. Although it also has to be noted that I would still kill for proper range displays on the... Uh, flak because at the moment it's just a bit too uh, easy to blunder into somebody's flak zone. Not that I've ever abused that shamelessly with an Atlanta of course. <laughs> okay, so. Suicide torpedoes are in the water. Let's have a look at the initial deployment and Pravda are pushing more or less south. They're refusing point C by the looks of it. Streffs is edging up into point B, but he's already been picked up by enemy air. His flax going. He's not having much luck shooting down the bombers, but he's doing what he can. I don't think he's popped his defensive fire just yet. Unfortunately, it's lit him up for two Bensons. And yeah, the shells are starting to fly already. So the question is, has he managed to duck back into concealment? Uh, the only thing we can spot right now on your side is Fogus and the Turpets. The Low Yang, Chipaib, and Amagi have all disappeared. Uh, well, oh, Amagi respotted. And Streffs has popped his smoke. He's seen the aircraft overhead. Again, he's ducking for cover, trying to get behind the island, get the early cap in. And again, Pravda are coming out relatively... Well, I was going to say relatively aggressive, but actually 
Their cruisers are being a little slow to come off their starting line this time around. Streffs, of course, was incredibly aggressive into that cat point, and I think he might be regretting that decision a little, because he just ate 5,000 health worth of damage from some shots over that hill. Hmm. Interestingly, I'm seeing from your carrier, it's not a 2-2-2 two, 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 Shikaku, it's uh, three fighters. And whatever the other loadout is, I can't remember my Chicago loadouts. Yes, Huggykaze has gone for a somewhat more defensive loadout this time. I'm wondering if he's basically realised that perhaps he didn't do that much damage this time around. Well, last time around rather, so this time around he's going for keeping the enemy bombers at bay and playing the reconnaissance game. Yeah, because Victor's still running 2-2-2. Uh, two, two, two. From the looks, yes, still 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yeah, not that it's working out too well for him. One of his Huggy fighter squadrons just took a serious mauling, but he's ploughed his second squadron in, and I think we are going to see a lock and strafe here from Victor. And yep, there's the second fighter squadron turning around. Huggy has seen the trap. He's gone for the defensive breakaway, but he has lost a ton of aircraft again. Mm, and problem I is, am... that was all positioned over at Chapayev, and whilst Chapayev's not the most impressive AA suite, it still does a good fair amount if you leave him there for long enough. Indeed, but he lost four fighters in relatively quick session, and I don't think that gamble of his, going for air superiority over torque blowout, is going to pay off nearly as well as he thought it would. Yeah, Meanwhile, Victor's Streff's, only lost two planes. Streff's has managed to grab B, so again Pravda are taking the early advantage, but by the looks of things, we can see some hidden traces coming in. So I'm thinking that Nabba putting a bit of a shove up to sea, with the majority of their forces trying to stall the enemy at B. Yeah, we have a little bit of a flank going on up to C. It's a kind of a long flank. They're not taking a very direct route. They're really going quite far out for it, but... They do have a uh, dive bomber covering them, just for help in spotting, so... Yes, I have to wonder if Nab are being cautious, because they don't quite know where Pravda have put all their forces yet. Yeah, looks like... Uh, looks like Pravda are taking the Chapayev and Turpets all the way around to uh, the uh, southwest corner. They're being lit up now for it, but... They'll get behind that island in a couple of seconds, and none of the heavy hitters on Nab's team can really shoot that. Margie's too far out, and there's islands in the way of everything else. So Indeed. they should get there relatively unaffected. Yes, and the question is how much damage Forgus is going to be able to do when he clears those three islands to the south. In fact, cancel that. The better question is whether Forgas is going to live long enough to clear those islands south, because he's got torpedo bombers coming in. Oh, that's a double drop. That's a double drop. Mike Fisher in the water, him. and the t if the Tirpitz has a problem, it's that the rudder is glacial Oof. and Forgus is turning the wrong way. That's going to be a heavy this hit. This is going to hurt. Ow, 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 ow. He ate Oof. all bar one, and I think any thoughts of trying to turn that southern flank have just disappeared straight out of Forgus 21's head. Yeah, that's, that's a devastating strike. That's over 40k damage in that drop. That's really turned the tide. Indeed, I mean that has base Victor has just basically killed any attempt to flank to the south. Meanwhile, Paul, sorry, what was the name? Roll twenty six has just managed to dive into concealment back in point C, but not soon enough. He's just taken a lot of hits, and he's popped yep. his smoke as a consequence. He's still getting spotting from that dive bomber squadron, of course, but Fallen Orchid has also put smoke down. So it's going to be the blind shooting the blind at this point. Indeed it is. Yeah, that C flank, it looks like they will be able to capture C, barring any good blind shots. Well, there's an Amagi in that smoke, but really it's Roll 2016's Kutuzov that's doing most of the heavy lifting on that cap. Down south, however, we have another stalemate, and it's all stress is probably highly regretting his life decisions at the moment, and possibly changing his underwear. Is he going to get to that smoke cover? I, ooh, 662 health. Dives into crude BB smoke, Stopping but spot, ooh, there blind shot nail streffs. Ouch. Okay, so that's one of Pravda's 
destroy is gone and critically it's the low yang so that's another hydroacoustic search out of commission stress did his job however he managed to get the capture on b so unless nab realize they can push forward and in fact that's exactly what they are doing because the cap has started yeah. then the territory control is about to swing at the moment it's effectively 2-1 in nab's favor with b neutralized but it's about to go to 3-1 yeah, and Draco and Herbert both immediately went into B as soon as Stress went down. They were just kiting the edge, waiting for that moment, and now they're both in it, and that cap's going to go over really quickly. Indeed. And Meanwhile... it doesn't look like radars... The radar is in range if uh, the Japayev of Yamaneko does spot radar. He'll spot both of them pretty easily in the open there, but I think it might be on cooldown. Indeed, but meanwhile over in point C, Roll2016 grabbed the cap, but then he ate torpedoes and... We have got another carrier strike coming in. Torpedo bombers looks like they want themselves some more uh, Fraulein, but they were panicked by Dragon Striker's defensive fire. Fogus has got the torpedo beat on, and I think he's just going to scrape away this time. That's the difference defensive fire makes. I'm surprised Dragon Striker didn't pop it the first time. Maybe he had it on cooldown. Possibly. Oh, blood. I'm seeing a team kill. I saw the team kill as well, North Carolina on Chapayev. McCall yes, McAuliffe was danger close to Amineko, and I just think he forgot that the Chapayev was there. And um, well, 16-inch yeah. batteries at point-blank range, and a torpedo, and McAuliffe, I think there may be some harsh words in the dressing room when this is done. Yeah, the problem with the Chapayev in that position was it was trying to get some shells lobbed over that island, but with the Russian arcs, he was just shooting the island. It wasn't a great position to be in. So I think he was trying to move forward to actually allow his guns to actually do something this game, but that put him right in front of a North Cal 16-inch batteries, which is not a good place to be. Indeed, and Crude has got problems of his own. I don't know whether that was blind fire or not from See the Hell's Armagy, but he has just knocked down to 4,500 health. So things are not looking good for Pravda right about now. They're 100 points down. They are three control points to one down. Their gamble with the air superiority Shokaku really hasn't paid off as the dive bombers hit Alansei's Armagi. It's not looking good for Pravda, is it? Not particularly, no. It's not working out too well. Focus is still getting spammed by a lot of fire and they're trying to get rid of him before he manages to get out of range. I've, did they get a fire on him with that last salvo? Has he got undetected or not? I am not sure. Fergus, I think, has managed to blink himself back into cover, but the question is whether or not he's going to die, and I think he's safe. Hmm, good. In fact, he now it's... Switched to Amagi now. It... And now he's unspotted. Yes, and Alan Say is now the one coming under heavy fire, and he's on fire, just to make life even more interesting. 7,000, 6,000 health. Yeah. He's burning. He's got what looks like at he's least not two Kutuzovs brassing him up. And, yeah, the avalanche of high explosive just comes down, and the Amagi goes down. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, now the they're trying to finish is... crude. Yes, they're not going to have much luck because, well, that's a North Carolina. There are fighters. Yeah. <laughs> that said, Crude is probably not going to have too long to savor his victory. Oh, there because, he goes. North yeah, Carolina smashes him as the Alabama hits the Chapayev at the same time. And the Chapayev kills our because of for Nab, so Indeed, he finally went down. A lot of ships just went down in very quick succession, but it's not going to make too much of a difference for Pravda Kantai here. They are. They are going to need a miracle, I think is the politest way of putting this. They are down to half a North Carolina, what's left of a Benson and a Tirpitz, and Hagikaze, who is suddenly discovering that when you only have one torpedo bomber squadron, it's a little hard to kill things. Yeah, they really need to get into the cap circle to have any hope of pulling this back, because three cap circles to one is a very major advantage, but Dracor has just smoked up World Base and uh, SMCPO, so they're going to have perfect cover to defend anything that even tries to go into B. Indeed, Fallen Orchids managed to get a smoke screen into B, but he popped his launcher a little too early. He's run himself out of cover. Ooh, Fallen Orchid gets blamed by the Alabama. blamed as well. So the Beautiful is, reaction shot. Yeah, the question is whether or not McAuliffe is going to be able to take much advantage of it. He's getting blind fired. In fact, I think he might have He's radar, radar given the accuracy of that yeah. fire. 
And he's yeah. got a lot of torpedoes heading his way as well. In fact, two full Benson drops heading right towards him. 20 torpedoes, what looks like two Kutuzovs and a Benson brassing... No, sorry, a Chapayev and two Bensons brassing him up. Plus whatever the battleships are sending his way. Uh, oh, he was just oh, out of range of those right torp out. drops. That was a lucky shot. The Bensons just ran themselves out of steam, but the second launch did not run out of steam, and McAuliffe eats one right on the nose. Now the question is, can he control that flooding? The question also is, how long will that smoke last? Because see the hell in the Amagi is on a major flank around him. As soon as that smoke goes, see the hell will have a perfect broadside shot on him. Exactly, and... It's not going to matter, however, because NAB are on 985 points. Again, yeah. this is GG. Pravda are getting absolutely stomped. I think that is the politest possible way of putting this. Indeed, 997,000. The game over. Ouch, I think is the only possible way to describe that one. Absolutely. Now, I think what really shifted that initially was uh, the drop by uh, Victor on uh, Fogus and the Turpits. That 40k salvo with 7 out of 8 torpedo hits completely nullified that entire southern push. Yes. And they were just able to hold their position all too easily because they had no threat of a flank. Yes, I mean, that was the moment that Pravda got forced onto the back foot. And they never really recovered because NAB's US battleships were just able to go bow on, sit there, use the smoke from the Bensons, and just play defensively. And that's the nice thing about... And that's one of the things about domination mode. Once you have a control point advantage, you can sit back, dig in, and just make the enemy come to you. Indeed. Ooh, hectic matches. Yes, as I say, League of the Sea might not be king, but you still get some pretty good games in it. So I do not think we are going to go to a third round at this point. Pravda have basically lost the match, and that is pretty much it, unless they decide to play a third game for Pride.